Hey, welcome to Heroes 8. I'm Paul. And I'm Patrick. And tonight we're going to be doing, or today we're going to be doing a rapid review. If you don't know what a rapid review is, a rapid review is a quick review of a movie that either you've missed, you haven't heard of, or something that's been on the shelf that we're trying to, trying to push you into just watching us um, today, tomorrow, sometime soon. It's, yeah, it's essentially movies that we really enjoy and um, that we feel need to get a little bit extra love, um, which goes uh, now and again. Some of these movies are not great, just movies we love. Some of them are brilliant. Um, which goes, um, and uh, what are we doing tonight, uh, Patrick? This time around, we're going to do Snowpiercer, Paul. Everybody knows it's the big icy train film, but can you tell them a bit more about it? So, Snowpiercer is about a, um, which goes, yeah, it's about a train, but it's based on a po post apocalyptic world where um, they try to fix climate change by spreading a chemical in the air to, to um, cool the earth. Uh, this ended up causing, you know, climate uh, malfunctions and imbalances and everything like that, and a flash freeze, um, which was, uh this train, Snowpiercer, was built um, essentially as a kind of, um, as a touristy kind of like, you know, cruisy thing on the land, but it becomes the last bastion of humanity, um, which was, but in the 17 years that it's been on the rails, uh, which is obviously classism starts breaking out and, and everything and we are following essentially I think the second revolt of the train um, which is, this is a brilliant film based on a graphic novel called Le Transpersage I'm terrible good with good job names. I'm going to go with what he just um, said it's done by Jacques uh, by Jacques Loeb uh, and uh, Benjamin Legrade and uh, Jean-Marc uh, Roussette. Um, it's Perfect mostly, pronunciation for all of those, by the way. Thank they're you. They're all terrible. I will definitely put their names up, um, which is, I apologize. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a film essentially based on a train, um, which is the uh, where the last uh, society of humans live on this frozen barren wasteland. The train is a perpetual motion machine, so as long as it moves, it will not stop. Um, it provide it's a self-contained ecosystem perfectly balanced so that it makes sure that everybody can survive within us our story is mostly focused on the people um in the rear of the uh um kind of carriages at uh, the lowest class um steerage and we follow the character um which is chris evans uh plays called curtis um, the graphic novel is very much the same kind of thing. It's a little bit darker, a little bit more based on uh, classism. There's also a TV show on Netflix, um, but I do recommend you watch the film and then the uh, then the TV show. Yeah, it's, it's funny. The, the TV show, slightly different to the movie, um, but still interesting nonetheless. Yeah, both But today, them... we're talking about the movie. Yeah, today we're talking about the movie. It was released in 2013, and it was dire directed by... Bong Sho Ho, um, which is who uh, fell in love with the um, graphic novel, the French graphic novel. So Yeah, famously, uh, Bong Joon Ho won the Oscar for Parasite not too long ago, so a couple of years after doing this. And it's it's 10 years old now. Snowpiercer is 10 years old. It's, it's hard to believe how quickly time moves. Um, it's an interesting production because, like you say, it's from a French graphic novel. It ended up being a Korean-Czech production, so... Uh, Bong Joon Ho, and you know, it, it got filmed in uh, the Czech Republic in a big studio there where they reconstructed a train and put it on gimbals. It it really helps with the authentic feeling of so many of the scenes in the the movie. And great director, clever shooting. You know, uh, uh, there's very much a sense of movement from the rear of this train and this the story that happens as people move further forward in it. Um, Paul. That perpetual motion engine machine part of it all, there is not a layer or level of Snowpiercer that's not supposed to be some social commentary. Yeah. It's like it you'd have to be blind not to see the big things. But every time you see it, there's another new little layer, another new little level that they throw in, even down to, you know, the outside, the inside, everything about it. So you get this big icy world, and then you get this train that just can't stop moving. You get a society moving through time. And then people trying to move through the the class structure, it's it's not hiding its messages, but it actually does a pretty good job telling them. Yeah, it is. I like I like like I like the French because they're very focused on classism systems and stuff like that. They're very do not like them when they make um kind of 
uh, metaphors and analogies and allegories all about kind of classism and stuff like that they do it in such a good way and they couldn't have done a better job than having steerage third class second class first class and then the the engineer uh the engineer and maker of the train kind of being the literally it's literally what classism is in in the world and and the story is all about that it's about the people who have nothing finally breaking their back finally getting like having enough and uh and kind of um revolting against this classism system and it's such a like it's such a great visual way of showing the differences between what their world is all about and what the rest of the world is all about being in this train because as you move forward in this world the color palettes change to magicness and and like they're very vibrant and beautiful and everything that's going on upwards is just so amazing and, and like it looks really nice um but it's got that undertone of kind of like it's built upon the backs of these people and you know the lower class people and stuff so the only reason these people in second class and first class can survive is based on the the sweat toil sacrifice of the of the lower classes so it's it's a very bleak movie in the sense of kind of what will be done to keep that control and everything and the violence of that but it's it's the performances and stuff like that are so well put together and everything from uh curtis uh done by um chris evans uh captain america um which is it's also got a Tilda Swinton as essentially the voice of the train, um, Jamie Bell, October Spencer, um, it also has a uh, which is um John Hurt, as well, um, which is just a fantastic uh, kind of portrayal. So yeah, it's it's an amazing it's an amazing dark film expo- about exploitation and and um, societal yeah. inequalities and stuff. And before anybody thinks that this is just darkness, like it it is, but it's it's done. How should I put this? This is still done in a sci-fi way. It's trying to tell the story through um, not just uh, words and darkness and grimness, but also there's there's action, there is progress, there are, there are there are scenes. You know, this is this is not just French noir. You know, somebody sitting in the corner smoking a cigarette in the dark, going, and then we ate each other. It's it's real. It's very much a uh, a palatable movie for most, but it doesn't turn its face away from the grim realities and that's why there are you know there's a there's violence in this but there is like you say the the vibrance and the the lifestyles that change as we move through the carriages or the classes of this train uh one of the things that i enjoy most about it is that food and that that idea of sustenance is not just um it's not just oh in the back they they eat gruel essentially they eat like gelatinous uh protein bars yeah and then you know it's it's sushi and everything else up the front, some very decadent foods. Um, it, it's that anything they do like that, they don't just go see bad for them, good for these. There is definitely a a further kind of this is this is not just people's quality of life. This is what you need to live. All of these people, this train represents everybody's need to live as a society together, and then turns the cameras in to go. And this is how horrible society is once we know we all have to live together um and i think i think that's where the the engineer the the god figure at the head of the train i think that's where towards the second half of the movie paul not only am i intrigued to know more about them and what twist i know is coming about them in some way um and there are twists in this movie which i guess we can't really spoil but the payoff is it's mostly there and that's ed harris by the way for anybody who's wondering how you how you put the face on um the engineering head of society in this sort of weird dystopian future ed harris is a pretty good choice because he has enough malevolence yet enough emotion the same reason he worked in truman show is the reason he works in snowpiercer yeah um wilford is the is the train conductor name you hear it const- yeah. constantly or the 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 engineer's name um which is yeah it is yeah it is primarily an action film um which is uh, action sci-fi film um which is but yeah it does it is a kind of very it's what sci-fi does really well which is it it takes note of the fact that you know um classism is real and this is what this is what it takes to to those class for those classes to survive 
um kind of thing and it's it's all that um but yeah the performances are amazing the set pieces are absolutely gorgeous um as you said they're all based on um which is um uh, the the sets are all kind of on gyros and stuff like that so you feel this kind of consistent uh, movement and unbalance about everything um you get told about the ecosystem um because it's an entirely enclosed ecosystem so everything is weighed and, mm. and measures and calculates and everything like that so like um it's very it, it feels even more crueler in that sense that everything is so calculated and measured and stuff like that that like um this can't be you know a little bit more spread out um than what it is in in, in the thing uh yeah wilfred's the the engineer is such a such an oppressive character even though we don't get a face for quite a while kind of thing which is really nice um kind of thing it, it's fun to kind of have that um uh godlike figure throughout the thing and then have him his revealing is so nice and stuff and that's not a spoiler it's still so yeah. gravity driven and stuff like that so it's fantastic so um yeah my final thoughts only, only sci-fi paul only sci-fi can take the unpalatable and give you a, a way for it to be shown quickly and effectively because if you if you take all of the things that it's an allegory for and try to show them in the real world it would turn people away from the screen straight away whereas make make the world into a train make society into the, the people on it and then draw with nice big broad strokes all of the horrors of that and then use some fine pencil to draw in the humanity and sometimes the lack of humanity on both sides you know there's not everybody who's in the back of the train is a hero and not everybody who's in the front of the train is a villain it's it's got more nuance than that so yeah i think it's worth worth your time i would definitely recommend seeing this over the tv series though i would i would say go for this yeah i yeah i watch this first and then if you want to see more of that world and stuff they they are very different um which is i enjoy both uh, and and the graphic novel um yeah one of the biggest tell things of this is hope and how hope can be controlled and used and stuff like that um which is is just a, as the as an amazing kind of uh, storytelling moment uh, my final thoughts yeah this is definitely sci-fi it's social commentary thought-provoking action-packed fields kind of niceness and everything like that so yeah definitely go see it even just before the performances and the sets pieces themselves so yeah um, so while you're here and if you've gone and seen snowpiercer if you watched it because we recommended it come on back let us know in the comments down below if you've seen it before and you've had a watch of this video please let us know what you think of our thoughts and we'd love to know yours and while you're there maybe a like maybe a subscribe uh and even a share to some of your friends if you know anybody else who's interested in this sort of stuff tell them um yeah and then also recommend anything else that you want for rapid reviews but thank you very much for watching i've been paul and i've been patrick and we've been here a safe see you, see you next time